now I'm here. Uh, <laughs> with the magic of technology on a live show, I can walk four feet somewhere else. May is South Asian Heritage Month, and recently Rachel Giza pan out to the full shot, which we've been on. Our brilliant book brandisher, book brandisher Rachel Giza, spoke to a an upcoming, a hot new yes. uh, South Asian author. Yes. Who is she? Tell us about her. Her name is Tanuja Desai Eda. She is a South Asian young woman writer from the United States. She's currently living in London with her Parisian husband and playing in a band. So she's this amazing Renaissance artist. Wow. Yeah, she's and, wonderful. And she's uh, beautiful. Too. Yes. I might, I, <laughs> you can just throw that I in. I can throw that, that in. Well, you said that. I didn't you, say it was the producer that said that. Oh, really? <laughs> it was. So you don't think she's beautiful? I'm, she is beautiful. But I don't know what that has to do with her writing. Well, I just said it in here somewhere. It I don't know what she looks like. It was very gratuitous of you to, yeah, to yeah, throw I that know. in. It was gratuitous. It was wasn't very it? gratuitous. All right. Um, well, I, the book is called Born Confused. And uh, when I first saw it, I thought, that's about me. But then I thought, I guess that's a, 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 a generalizes for first generation immigrants to the Western uh, world. Absolutely, and I think a lot of Tanuja's <clears throat> own experiences in this book. Um, it's the story of a teenage girl named Dimple Lala, which is one of the greatest names in fiction. And she's 17, she's trying to figure out who she is. Her parents are South Asian, she's first generation, and she's trying to sort of live on the hyphen of being South Asian and American. And the thing that I like about this so much is that it takes place in this really great underground South Asian scene in New York that was booming right. about five years ago so the world of bhangra music and you know kids dressing up and really getting in touch with who they are right, and right. living all parts of their identity it's amazing and I understand a lot of those people are really beautiful <laughs> in the scene I mean <laughs> let's take a look at your interview it's actually really interesting thanks Rachel here it is born confused on play tell me about the title of the book the title of the book, Born Confused, comes from the term American-born confused desi. Uh, desi, loosely translated, um, means what well, means from my country, sort of homegirl or homeboy. And the term ABCD is a term that was created by South Asians in South Asia to describe um, second generation uh, Americans who are purportedly confused about their South Asian background and their culture. And um, so it's American born confused this and it goes all the way to, to Z. It's sort of emigrated from Gujarat, house in Jersey, kids learning medicine, now owning property, quite reasonable salary, two uncles visiting, white xenophobia yet zestful. <laughs> it took me a while to, to get someone who could give me the entire alphabet, but that's, that's the, the long and short of it, basically. And did yeah. it ever describe you at some point? I mean, how much, or how much of you is in Dimple in the book? I think, um, I mean, I don't know if that, I think a lot of people who are actually from the second generation culture are, you know, slightly amused by the term ABCD, but also slightly insulted because it's, it's a term created by, you know, another group to describe them. Um, I do feel, like all of the questions that Dimple's sort of thinking about in terms of, um, you know, Indian identity, American identity, and sort of learning self-expression through art, those were all questions I was definitely thinking about, you know, a lot for a few years at least, probably longer, probably my whole life on some level, but consciously for at least a few years before writing the book. You used to be my Romeo. I could see now, out of the corner of my eye, that the line leading into the club was 99% Indian. The faces were all in a golden row against brick, like a cheerful, decked out, subcontinental criminal lineup. Though the crime would be what? Eating with the left hand, smelling the flowers before offering them to the gods, touching someone else's food while on the rag? But upon a closer sidelong glance, I realized this was a breed of Indian I had never seen before in my life. One of the other things you explore in the book in a very funny way and, 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 and in a great way is the question of appropriation. And we're sort of in this time of uh, huge interest of, of South Asian culture in mainstream cultures. What did you think as sort of watching that happen? Well, there was a wave of it, I know, a few years ago when I was still living in New York. And at that time, um, it was really exciting. And I think it was also because at that time, I and a lot of people I knew were, for the first time in our lives, starting to kind of embrace our Indianness. So there was a sense of excitement and there was also a sense of, you know, oh my god, what do I do? MTV's figured out how to be Indian before I have. You know, because you'd see rock stars with bindis and all this stuff and and for some reason it would, you know, if an Indian American was wearing a bindi, people could be like, oh, were you just at a wedding, an Indian wedding or something? But if someone else did it, it looked like a kind of cool trend-setting thing to do. Because even if uh, being Indian is trendy in many ways in those industries right now, even after the trend is over, I think there will be doors that just remain open that weren't open before. 
So if that's a way to kind of spark a genuine interest in the culture, I think it's a, it's a good thing. You know I wish you make your mind up. Oh, oh. Okay, getting our good buzz this week, Star Wars geeks for circumventing the prying eyes of the Canadian government.